Hello everybody, my name is Benedikt and I'm a data journalist at Süddeutsche Zeitung in Munich, Germany. And I'd like to give you a short presentation about how we are doing journalism with R. Just a short content uh, introduction thing. Data journalism is one of the latest developments in the media industry. It's about 15 years old, you could say. And, uh, well, it has some roots in the 1950s, but most of it is a totally new form of journalism. The idea behind it is to use statistical tools and methods to investigate and explain developments in our data-driven and more and more data-driven world. And I'd like to give you a short introduction and a short overview about um, how we're usually working with R, what our casual workflow is for a data-driven journalistic project. Why does that matter? Well, there is a famous report by the New York Times a couple of years ago where one of the first things they stated there was um, not enough of our report uses digital storytelling tools that allow for richer and more engaging journalism. Too much of our daily report remains dominated by long strings of text. And that is something that's also a big concern for our newspaper. Um, the New York Times calculated some numbers and um, they found out that just around 12% of their stories had some deliberately placed visual elements, so that's not much. I mean, usually there are a couple of hundred stories per day. Um, but that's also an idea we're trying to get better in, place more visuals to explain things that might be explained better in a visual, better for our readers. Who are we? Well, Süddeutsche Zeitung is one of the oldest German newspapers. Um, it was founded right after the war. It was one of the first newspapers in Germany. Today it reaches around 1.3 million readers in print and, um, well, a couple more on our digital channels um, in May, which was obviously pretty strong thanks to COVID-19. We had nearly 100 million visits on all our digital products. And I am part of the data and digital investigation team. We are five journalists and we combine the work with data um, with expertise in digital research. So we're using digital tools, technologies, to investigate stuff. Um, most of our team members have a background in social sciences. We have one uh, who studied math and physics and one who comes more from a developer perspective. What do we do? Well, we have um, a couple of things that we're doing. We're analyzing and visualizing large data sets, obviously in a way. Um, we're helping other departments with data-driven reporting. So they can ask us questions when they're having some um, stats or something. Um, and maybe they have questions about the visualization stuff. Um, and we're also doing a lot of shorter and long-term research and investigation with data and digital tools. Shorter projects, which usually could last between a couple of days to one or two weeks maybe, um, could be analyzing election results. That's a typical thing data journalists do wrangle through the numbers and try to find stories out of these numbers. Um, we're also trying to analyze the impact of the ideas that are currently being discussed in the political debate. And um, if we're lucky, we can find a number that might um, add something to the debate. Longer term projects can range from a couple of weeks to a couple of months. Um, and if you're looking at the Panama Papers or the Paradise Papers, even a couple of years. So it's a very broad range that we're having there. Um, one project that's not about a large-scale investigation was something a colleague of me did um, some months ago. She was analyzing the speeches in the German parliament and built a NLP model. Um, so she didn't have to compare word by word, but uh, she was trying to compare meanings over time in the German parliament. How do we do this, all of this? Well, we're trying to break down the workflow in a bit, um, but let me start with this. that most of you might know, Hadley Wickham's visualization of the data science process. And I think it's um, quite similar if we're taking the data science process in journalism um, with some slight changes. So a lot of the stuff is pretty, pretty similar, um, but we're taking out the model part a bit. Um, data journalists focus less on the model building. There are exceptions and it's, I have the feeling it's getting better and a lot, of, a lot of more models are built for journalistic purposes. 
but we have experienced a lot of problems with that when we're trying to communicate uncertainty. And models usually come with some kind of uh, uncertainty. And it's very, very hard to explain uncertainty to readers and um, to explain what a model does to readers. So, um, as I've mentioned, I have the feeling it's getting better and um, more models are being built to explain stuff and um, make journalism better. But right now, model building is not one of the big domains, large domains in data journalism. But the rest of it is pretty similar, I guess, to the data science workflow. It's about finding suitable data, it's about data wrangling, of course, a lot of, a lot of the time gets in that. Data analysis and data visualization is very important for data journalism, as visualization and um, communicating the data is like the biggest part of our job. How to find suitable data? Well, the big difference, I guess, between data science and data journalism is that we are using a lot of publicly available data, open data, from government institutions, for example. We're also using a lot of data that's scrapable from the web. And sometimes, when you work in the investigative department, you're using data from leaks, for example, the Panama Papers. Let's dig a little deeper in that. Public data. I had the experience uh, is very easily available in the US and the UK that have a strong tradition of um, transparent government in a way. In Germany, it's not that easy. There is a freedom of information law on a national level. So for national institutions, you can ask um, for certain data sets. But in Germany, we are very strong with data privacy, which is good. But it has a downside. If you're the one that wants to get data, is always uh, a nice refusal, a nice excuse for refusal of the, this open data. And uh, not even every state has a FOI law, for example, Bavaria doesn't. Some examples of public data sources. Well, the biggest public data source I'd name in Germany is DStatus, which is the federal agency for statistics, which also collects from the single states in Germany and they have a huge repository of data and they are very nice and uh, always try to support your data requests. So they are very useful data source for us. And I'll name another one, the Federal Agency for Disease Control and Prevention, the Robert Koch Institute, which is currently in the news. Um, they are publishing the COVID-19 data and they were learning a lot in, during the last months. They started out not that good with a, with a table on a website. And right now they're having a open data, well, you could say an open data website where you could uh, use an API to access the data in a JSON format. You can also download a CSV. So they got a lot better during the last time. Um, yeah, I'm always trying to, to name some packages that we're using for DStatus, the Federal Agency of Statistics. You could use the DStatus Cleaner that a colleague of mine wrote a couple of years ago. Um, but luckily, they recently, really recently, added flat file CSVs for download. So probably you won't need that in package anymore. You could just download the flat file CSV from them. They used to have multi-line headers, CSVs, and all that stuff. So stuff you really didn't want to care about when just reading in your data. Script data is something we're doing a lot. Could start by just extracting tables from web pages, um, accessing and converting JSONs to flat files. This is basically not scraping, but well, um, well, it's making data accessible that's on the web. Um, and automated data collection, of course is another important part of that. Um, we're mainly using read R if it's already in a flat file format. Rvest is a library we often use for web scraping and JSON Lite is my personal favorite for um, accessing JSONs. Leaked data is something a bit separate because uh, it's usually not transmitted via the internet. Usually you get a USB stick and hard, hard disk drive or a DVD. And if it's a really sensible data, uh, you're usually not sitting on a machine that's connected. It's usually on a machine that is not online and it will never see the internet. Um, we have a database system in use. It's open source, it's called Aleph, where we are trying to make all the data accessible depend, um, without looking at the, 
the document type. So you can have emails, you can have PDFs, whatever. Um, it's OCR and you can uh, get a full text search in there. Data wrangling in R is something that takes up most of the time of our work. I'll give you a um, current example, COVID-19. We are currently producing around 10 automated charts that are being updated every 30 minutes um, from various sources. We're putting all that together in a single data frame and um, having separate layers or separate factors um, where we can just filter out the data for each individual plot. But it's much easier to have one data frame that we're putting into our archive um, and that's being appended all the time. We're uploading the data to Data Wrapper. Data Wrapper is our um, visualization tool um, with the big advantage that it's um, very easy to get mobile ready charts from there, charts that are being put on for desktop um, screens and even charts for print. Um, you can get out of that. This is the COVID-19 project folder. I put out a lot of stuff, but basically um, what we're having is a big um, functions folder with input functions, production function, processing functions that are all settling on or based on each other. Input gets everything in, then we got that data frame, then we're processing the data frame, calculating for example doubling rates, um, and then in production each chart got its own got its own R script that pulls the data out of the data frame and pushes the data up to data wrapper. And we're just running that on his server. The typical data wrangling libraries, well, I guess a lot of you use the tidyverse and we do as well. Dply R, Stringer, and Tidy R are the ones we use most. And a big part of our job is to find a story in the data. So data analysis plays an important role in our job. And there are some typical story points in data journalism that I just wanted to mention here. Winners or losers or something we're always looking for. High or low, top or bottom are just equivalent. Outliers are very interesting and it's something that uh, is a real outlier, which is usually a story for us. And change over time is something you see a lot in data journalism, which is pretty obvious if you have a couple of points of time um, that you just plot. And if you see something, it's already a story. We're using dplyr a lot, and uh, if you're having something special in mind, we use specialized packages. So I just brought up Quantida. Um, there was a project I did a couple of years ago where we were trying to compare the position of a party to its election program. And there was the WordFresh algorithm used there, and it's implemented in the Quantida package. So it always depends on what you're going to do. Let me put something um, more effort on, the, on the, the story part. This is a project a colleague of mine did about children's books and she collected uh, thousands of uh, children's books with uh, keywords that describe what was happening in this book. It was from a library in Germany. And she did uh, the analysis and the visualization in R, so that's a good example. And this is um, like, well, you could say it's a word cloud. Basically, it's a graph. Um, that shows some of the keywords that are associated with a male or boys adventures in children's books. And you can see, for example, um, you can see pirate, you can see fight, you can see orphan, you can see um, Africa and Asia, historical story. So um, that maps the type of male adventures or boys adventures that you can find in the children's books in our data. It gets interesting when you compare that to the female adventures. As you can see here, there are not that many dots in that graph, which shows that female adventures are limited to uh, less keywords. That's the first learning. And of course, the content is different as well. Um, it's more about love, it's about vacation, it's about horseback riding or princes. Um, so it's not just the content that changes, but also the diversity of the stories is different. That's one interesting uh, learning that I've got from this, from this analysis from my colleague. If we're doing data visualization in R, we usually use data wrapper for, let's say, simpler digital graphics, because um, it's very fastly done and it's already mobile ready. And we got a slight interactivity that you can use or you don't have to use it. 
Um, so it takes a lot of the pain that you usually have when you're creating graphics for um, digital products. For fancier graphics, we usually use ggplot, which is also very nice. We put that in the newspaper because the print designers can just access the uh, SVGs or PDFs and work with that. The problems we encounter. Well, um, maybe some of you have a pretty similar feeling when you're doing data science. Some of our colleagues have no idea um, how tedious the work with data can be and how long it might take. The problem is for them, some of them it might look like magic what we're doing, we're just typing something into our keyboards and our laptops and we get a result, a graphic visualization. Um, so yeah, it's always hard and it's always a lot of uh, explanation needed, what we do and how we did. And um, well, I got the feeling it's getting better in the last years, um, but maybe you experience something similar. There's one thing I'd like to mention, um, which is sometimes being discussed in journalism, it tended to be a lot more discussed a couple of years ago, is data journalism really, uh, journalism was just techie hacking into uh, your laptop. And I'd argue, yes, it is, um, but it's something different. Uh, it is another perspective on information gathering because you got another type of source. Data is now your source that you can ask questions. And it's another perspective on communicating research results to our readers or our users because it's not a lot about texts. Well, there might be a, an option that you're writing a text and not having any visualization at all, but mostly the work we do um, in the end got some form of visualization. So um, it's also another perspective on showing the results of your research to the users. You can find a lot of our uh, stories on the project side, projekte.suddeutsche.de, and some of our code on GitHub. We're trying to publish more of our research code, um, mostly R, sometimes Python. Um, but um, yeah, you know, it takes a lot of time cleaning up your stuff. And so that's always an issue. Um, but we are really trying to do better. If you got any questions left, feel free to contact me um, on via email, or you can uh, send me a PM DM on Twitter. Um, and if you want to find out more about the topic data journalism, just follow the hashtag DDJ for data driven journalism on Twitter, which is very helpful, and you really get a sense what's going on this, in this community. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of uh, user.